Hi everybody. Wow, do I have some crazy stuff to talk about today. You know I'm like obsessed with GMOs um, and I know the difference between selective breeding and genetically modified like Monsanto style. But I have come across some information that is just blowing my mind and it has to do with wheat and it has to do with ergot. And I just want to give a big thank you to YouTube user Tanjorheen, and I'll put his link to his page below. He's a really interesting guy. He does his videos in kind of a, an artistic, poetic sort of parable style. Um, it's almost like performance art, but he's got a lot of really good information on there. And so because he was talking about ergot, which is a mold that, you know, causes hallucinations and all kinds of problems and how it is infiltrating our grains. And so I've been doing some research and this is what I've got put together. Um, apparently GM wheat is up to 40 times more susceptible to ergot. Now supposedly there is no GM wheat commercially sold here in the United States, although Monsanto has made it. But I don't really trust Monsanto, I don't know if you do. So there's a thought for you. I'm going to have a lot of links posted below. Ergot is also derivatives from that, or descendants from ergot are used to make uh, LSD. So the lysergic acid is basically the active hallucinogenic ingredient in ergot. There are cattle that are getting poisoned by it. On the eastern United States, they get, they get it. And apparently, it's an issue with them. So, of course, now I'm freaking out. Like, is it not only in my grains, but is it in my milk and cheese, too? I don't know. But it is a mold, so there's hope. And the first thing I thought of was, how strange is it that I've had this obsession with garlic recently? So I'm going to go ahead and just start with the positive side of this, which is garlic, um, and I have been chewing raw garlic every day for about a month now. I had a cough and I used it, and then I also noticed that just some other things with me were getting better, and so um, I started looking up garlic, and like I had food poisoning, and garlic helped with that. It kills all kinds of germs such as Campylobacter, which is the main cause for food poisoning. That's actually a bacteria, not a mold. But it creates these biofilms that antibiotics can't reach and garlic just goes straight in there and gets it. Now it has to be raw garlic that you chew or chop and then chew because right when the garlic gets chopped, oxygen hits it and it oxidizes and creates a chemical called allicin. And that allicin fades away after just minutes. So you really have to eat it raw. I really think the pills are just a ripoff. So that's just my opinion. So I'm not selling you anything. I'm just saying go to the grocery store and you can buy raw garlic. I had a reaction the first day that I chewed raw garlic because I know you know that Eden Cultures is all about culturing. So yeah, you know, I did have die-off reaction. My head was just spinning. My hands were tingling. I felt totally trippy and weird. And I knew that it was a die-off reaction, so I just kept going with it. And, of course, after the first day, that didn't happen anymore. But now that I'm learning about all this ergot from Tangerine's channel, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, did I have ergot poisoning? So back to the ergot. You know, if it is in your system, okay, let's talk about that first, and then we can talk about how you can avoid it since I already told you that garlic is effective against it, according to one study I found. It's going to be in the links below. So if it gets in your system, you know, not only can it just cause hallucinations, but there are some people that think it could be linked to celiac disease, this explosion in gluten intolerance just in the last few years. Um, let me just mention one more thing before I talk about its effects that there was some there were some blood there was some blood samples that were stored of soldiers decades ago from the 50s and recently it got pulled out and they tested for the antibodies for wheat intolerance in those soldiers and they figured that it would be about the same as it is today you know but that now we're just diagnosing it. it existed then but we're just now diagnosing it well no that wasn't the case it was really low 
So they weren't having these problems even just 60 years ago. So um, something has happened recently, just in the last about 10 years. Now, what has happened recently could be the GM wheat that has gotten into our wheat. So there were some people, I think it was India, and the link is going to be below, they actually found I'm not certain it was India, but the link is below. They found traces of this in their wheat, and they were like, wait a minute, we never authorized this. How did it even get here? Okay. Now, that is besides the genetic altering that was done in 462 AD, where they hybridized wheat naturally. And so we went from the traditional einkorn wheat, which has about 5% gluten, to the triticum hybrid species today and, and triticale and all of those uh, that have 55% gluten, you know, tons of gluten, and that's why we have our spongy, yummy bread. You know, they used to break bread in Bible days because bread would crumble and break. It wasn't glutinous. And um, so that is a concern, okay? Now, ergot in your body. Ergot. When you look at it, I know I keep saying in your body, but I'm getting there. When you look at it growing on a grain, it forms this like black, long thing. And people didn't know what it was a long time ago, and they just put it in with their grains. Um, the first thing that pops to my mind when I saw pictures of this and the thought that it is pervasive in our society is Morgulon's disease. These people are having these black thread-like things coming out of them. And so, whoa, what if it is some ergot? Because they're not, there's different species and strains, or I should say strains, of this ergot fungus. And there's even one that attacks insects, and they have a specific strain for each insect. The link is also below to this disturbing video where it literally gets into the insect's brain and they become zombie-like, okay? And they just like philander up these stems to go out into the sun because these spores, they proliferate better under a hotter sun, which we are also experiencing here on this earth, okay? So um, <laughs> then the spore literally explodes out of their head and grows. And it is very specific to each insect. So I saw that video and I thought, Morgulon's disease, oh my goodness, now these insects are dying, you know. Now, ergot poisoning, traditional ergot poisoning has a lot of symptoms that are similar to other issues, such as um, tingling in the hands and feet. Well, I was experiencing that when I ate this raw garlic. Now, I just posted a video the other day talking about folic acid and how Folic acid can mask a B12 deficiency. Well, folic acid also helps with cell replication. Folic acid also is naturally produced in your body by funguses, yeasts, okay? Yeast, that's how they grow in in the lab, but it's also how it's grown in your body. So there could be a connection there as well. Um, so yes, now I'm in a situation where I'm like eating lots of B12 and I'm even, I even bought some sublingual B12 from Dr. Mercola because now that I'm not taking the folate, once I stopped taking it about a month ago, I started having these, you know, like back aches and lower back and tingling. And so then when I chewed the garlic, within I think it was days after that, it was like super tingling that first day. And then since then, this sore back, and literally for three days, I've been taking B12, and it's diminish, diminishing greatly. But also, for the last whole month, I've been chewing raw garlic. So, once again, disclaimer, I am the science experiment, not you. So, if you want to listen to anything I say or take heed in anything I say, go talk to a healthcare professional that knows about, preferably, that knows about nutrition, because if you talk to a, never mind, you get my point. So I just want you to check out these links and, and research it for yourself. I just want to say, Tangerine, thank you so much. Like, um, my son is allergic to rye. He eats rye and he, like, breaks out and goes crazy. So um, rye is, of course, the most pervasive 
ergot host. And um, so that's freaking me out a little bit because my son is a wheat fanatic. And I have gone back and forth on wheat for a very long time because I do follow the Bible. And, of course, in the Bible, you know, Ezekiel 4.9, it says take this, you know, wheat and barley and sprout it, you know. And so we get the Ezekiel 4.9 bread. I still don't like it very much, though, because they add gluten back in after they sprout it. And then they put soybeans in there. Like, oh, you know, it drives me crazy. But speaking of sprouting grains, I really should be doing it myself. So let's think about this ergot. Um, it also, long ago, when they were sprouting grains, which is what the Weston A. Price Foundation recommends, they would rinse. They would, you know, soak their grains. They would rinse them three times. They would make sourdough. Well, guess what? If you're sprouting it and culturing it, you're going to crowd out that ergot. Now, I don't know if Tanjorheen is going to agree with me on this, but if you're controlling the culture, then these good yeasts, okay, are going to crowd out the bad. Yeast and molds and funguses are all in the same um, I just learned this in microbiology domain. Yeah, they're all in the same domain. They're, they're all prokaryotic, eukaryotic, I can't remember. Anyway, the point is, they're, they're the same. Yeast is a fungus. It's just a single-celled fungus. So if you're growing a good yeast and you're controlling that, like with beer, they specifically pick that yeast, you know, and then that's going to crowd out the, the ergot. But unfortunately, there are still going to be toxins there. So, like, let's just say you don't rinse your grain. You just soak it, and you grow a new um, culture on top of that. You didn't rinse away these ergot spores. The toxins associated with that are still going to be there. So I've got some whole millet in there that I just added to some broccoli chowder soup that I made, and I'm wishing that I had just put it in a strainer and sprayed it down really well because it can grow on millet too. So, but wheat, GM wheat, is the most susceptible. So why is it that I can tolerate millet? My son can tolerate wheat but not rye, but it's organic wheat that he can tolerate. Or I can tolerate white bread but not whole grain. Well, perhaps the white bread has a lot of it removed. Um, of course, the white bread has folate added to it, which I believe is uh, causing mania in people, and I'm gonna, I need to make another video about that, and I'm going to call it bread mania. But if you don't eat a lot of B12 and you do eat a lot of enriched bread and you have more folate than you have B12, you could end up being manic, bipolar, or having a mental illness, and this is a new theory that I've developed. So, you know, it's either you eat the white bread and you become manic, or you eat the white bread that's not enriched and you get, you know, dementia from a thiamine deficiency, or you eat the sprouted grain that has ergot alkaloids on it, or you eat the whole grain that has ergot alkaloids on it, and it causes autoimmune issues because of all the phytates in there. It sounds like a lose, 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 lose type situation. Um, just something to think about. And another point is that the way that these wheats have been hybridized, the this ergot, these ergot family members are actually, they can be actually endo, I think it's called endophytic, meaning they're inside. They're not, so they no longer are just growing on the outside, like it's like a dust, like on your cheese, you can cut the mold off the cheese. They are in the genetic imprint of this plant, okay? So um, that was one of the issues with the cattle and, and the grasses that they were eating. So now we are eating this. They're messing with our grains. You know, um, I hope you subscribe to this guy's channel and you listen to a little bit of what he has to say. Um, he doesn't give a lot of specifics, but what he does is he gets you thinking so that you go and research it yourself. And that's what I've done. I hope that you take all of this and you put it together, and you can post, please, comments below, tell me what you think, because I cannot tolerate grains. I'm allergic to corn. I eat whole grains, and my face breaks out. You know, white bread I can tolerate, but I know it's not good for you, you know. 
Um, my son cannot eat rye. I mean, it's just freaking me out. And so are we going to bunch, are we all going to turn into a bunch of ergot zombies who just slander into the sun, lay down and die with spores exploding out of our body? I don't know, but there are people that have things growing out of their body right now that are black. I've seen pictures of it. And these ergot pods are also black. So just something to think about. Choose some raw garlic, folks. I love all of you. Have a wonderful day.